Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to Sharks and Coffee. I am your host, Dr. Jaws, and I've had a lot of coffee today, and I'm in this weird mix of being <laughs> extremely wired and extremely tired. So, <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. But, mm, we are going to talk about ecoregions today. Ecoregions, it's one of my favorite topics, and if you've been following Dr. Jaws, you know that I kind of obsess over it. Uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about the Virginian marine ecoregion, what an ecoregion is, and I made a new video, it's like a month old now, but it's 54 Sharks in New York, that has a lot of weird sharks in it. Um, like ecoregion oddities, if you will. So we're going to talk about that too. Like why are certain shark species that just seem bizarre, you know, and not part of the, you know, U.S. Mid-Atlantic, why are they included in the list? So yeah, a lot of cool stuff. First, let's talk about what an ecoregion is after a sip of coffee. Trademark sip. Hmm. Oh God, I, horrible podcast violation. I, in fact, I don't even know if you call this a podcast. It's on YouTube, so like, I'm I'm probably being jank and misusing all of it. But anyway, moving on. Ecoregions. Uh, so ecoregions are. It's a really nice shorthand way to say a really big part of the ocean that is unique. Um, so it's a set of, it's, it's like a big area in the sea that has a unique set of habitats. So for example, Florida, the southern tip of Florida, um, it has a unique re reef system and it sort of shares out with the Bahamas. Bahamas and southern Florida have a very similar reef system. And so that's compiled into a single region, an ecoregion. Um, and I think that one is called the Floridian ecoregion. Now, ecoregions, uh, a couple different groups have defined them. Um, so... The United States has its own idea of what its ecoregions are. I believe that is called ecoregions of North America. But the one that I always go to is Marine Ecoregions of the World. Acronym is MEOW, which is fantastic. <laughs> but um, Marine Ecoregions of the World is my default, um, and that's how I kind of do the Dr. Jaws stuff. If I ever talk about ecoregions, those are the ecoregions I cite. And why ecoregions are really handy, um, it's just, it's a great way to sort of compartmentalize the sea a little bit uh, in, as far as conservation goes. It's a way to kind of identify what habitats are unique, uh, where, which areas might have endemic species, like if there's a species living in this specific area. You know, is it is it unique to this area? Does that make this area unique? Um, it's it's a really great way to make big conservation problems a little bit more packageable, and smaller and better to identify. And it's complicated to explain why that is, but case in point, I mean, it's just organization. It's really handy, and I I love ecoregions. It's like there are these. 200 or so puzzle pieces um, that make up the, the coastal sea. Um, and we, we only have coastal ecoregions. You know, we haven't really defined a lot of deep areas yet. There's still a lot to explore, uh, which is really cool. But anyway, the... <laughs> um, on the east coast of the United States, where I hail from, there are... How many are there, actually? You've got the Gulf of Maine and Bay of Fundy, so that's one. From north to south, from Maine to, I'm gonna include Texas on the east coast. Um, they, some, they call that the Gulf Coast here, but anyway. Um, so from Maine to Massachusetts, that's the Gulf of Maine, Bay of Fundy. Um, from Massachusetts to North Carolina, that is the Virginian Marine Ecoregion, the one I keep talking about all the time because that's that's my home system. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> those are the sharks that I work with. You know, that's where I'm from. That's my home, basically. Uh, so that that. Like, I love learning about a lot of different places, but there's going to be a little bit of a extra focus on Virginian critters, um, just because it's that, you know, it's home. <laughs> home, family, stay in Cleveland. But anyway, um, North Carolina to Florida, the northern part of Florida, that's the Carolinian ecoregion, uh, Carolinian marine ecoregion. Southern Florida, just the tip of southern Florida, is the Floridian marine ecoregion. And then between uh, the Gulf Coast of Florida and Texas is the northern Gulf of Mexico. So these are all, how many is that? I'm not even counting. One of, is that five? Yeah, that's five. It's, it is that late. Five. <laughs> so east coast of the United States has five marine ecoregions. And these are five huge areas that are really handy uh, to help 
just identify bigger patterns, like uh, to, to kind of compartmentalize our coast into manageable units. Um, and to really just to notice bio, biological pa- patterns and biogeographical patterns in a, in a handy, healthy way. It's just it's just it's useful. It's it's just a tool. It, it's making everything like a nice compressible puzzle piece, uh, and I personally love it. So anyway, we're going to be specifically we should specifically talk about the Virginian. What makes the Virginian ecoregion the Virginian ecoregion? Like what makes it unique? What makes it special? Why is it different from the others? So let's start on the south side. Uh, so the boundary is a little vague and it varies between people. A lot of people like to say Cape, uh, Cape Hatteras is the southern extent of this part of the sea. Um, but I personally, I put it into Cape Lookout, Cape Lookout, North Carolina. Cape Hatteras and Cape Lookout are both part of North Carolina. They're part of the Outer Banks. Um, and they're part of this very important transition zone between subtropical species and temperate species. And the reason that is, is uh, if you kind of know ocean currents, uh, you've probably heard of something called the Gulf Stream. Gulf Stream is this gigantic warm water current that spins in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, comes up north alongside Florida, alongside Georgia, South Carolina, and then once it hits around Cape Lookout and Cape Hatteras in North Carolina, it starts to shoot out into the sea. So it's it's no longer going to be next to the coast. Uh, so on its way up, it's right next to the coast and the water is warm. You get a lot of cool tropical and subtropical species. You get angelfish, moray eels, you get reef sharks, you know. But then shooting offshore at Cape Hatteras and Cape Lookout, that's a big change. That that's a lot of warm water not on our coast anymore and that's it's just it means you know we won't get angelfish <laughs> i mean we do sometimes but that's all story mm. but yeah that's a big change you kind of have this like cool water wedge uh you know within the northern part of north carolina so the sound system like pamlico sound core sound albemarle sound which is more of an estuary like a like a brackish really really so it's not it's not super salty but anyway um you know all those areas are going to be cooler um the coast off of offshore of cape hatteras and definitely offshore of northern outer banks like corolla duck going to be cooler water right um so yeah that gulf stream transition very very big important transition so that separates a lot of species that makes the southern boundary of the virginia marine ecoregion and the virginia marine ecoregion moves northward um, including the chesapeake bay off maryland and virginia um, the delaware bay uh, off delaware and new jersey or between them i guess Um, new york which is why i called my video uh, 54 sharks in new york new york is kind of like the heart of this area it's the heart of this ecoregion as a whole um, Long Island Sound and Long Island, um, the vineyards, Mar- well, not the vineyards, but the islands like Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, and Block Island, Buzzards Bay in Massachusetts, until finally we get to Cape Cod. Now, what happens at Cape Cod is that there's this big, uh, how do I say this? You got this giant bank uh, called George's Bank um, that separate. It, it, it's kind of offshore. Um, well, I mean, it's on the continental shelf, but like it. It, for whatever reason, is a big biological barrier um, between the sort of temperate water species in the Virginia marine ecoregion and still temperate but colder species in the Gulf of Maine. For some reason, the bank and the ecology of the bank, it's just a big, it's another big transition zone. It's just a big geological feature that separates these two worlds. Um, and it's a, it's a very classically used uh, delineation as well uh for some reason just really cold you know tough like uh can't think of a good example but like cod like species or you know like the arctic big whales or like you know they just they like to hang out in the gulf of maine more than uh they do here in the virginian so south of georgia's bank it's just it's for some reason georgia's bank is a is a delineation um well there it is so (laughs) now between George's Bank and the Gulf Stream lines, right, you've got this very interesting zone 
that is temperate. It's kind of a cool temperate, um, but it's a meeting place between warm water and cold water creatures. So warm water sharks, like whale sharks and reef sharks and, um, well actually no, sorry, not reef sharks. Whale sharks, uh, bull sharks, bull sharks are a great example, bonnet head sharks, they'll be moving northward in the summer and they'll, they'll come into this area. But then at the same time, you got really, you know, awesome cold water sharks like basking sharks and piked dogfish and poor beagles, they'll be moving um, from the north um, in, in the winter. So it's, it's this very unique meeting zone. And the big thing that characterizes this ecoregion are estuaries. So estuaries are a mix of salt and fresh water. And kind of like I mentioned before, Pamlico Sound, Chesapeake Bay, Delaware Bay, uh, these are really important shark nursery habitats, specifically for sandbar sharks and dusky smoothhounds. They'll have their pups here um, uh, in the various uh, um, nurseries or nur estuary nurseries and estuaries are just great nurseries because they're shallow and you know they, they provide a safe place for not only sharks but like the prey they eat um, you know like rockfish butterfish a lot of herring st uh, st mm, sturgeons sturgeons are a big thing sturgeons are a fish that really needs a lot of attention in this area um, and, and as far as other endangered species that really need a lot of attention here, uh, right whales, right whales uh, do migrate in this area and white, right whales are in a lot of trouble. Sand tiger sharks, dusky sharks, um, cod, I know I mentioned cod earlier, cod used to be big here, but that's, they've really sort of, they dialed back, dialed back is the best thing to say. I believe North Carolina actually had a cod like surprisingly enough they had a big cod thing going on but it's just a lot of over harvesting has, has really hurt their numbers so um but anyway the, the region is uh big estuaries a lot of salt marshes salt marshes are another big thing uh very sandy <laughs> very silty um which it, it is kind of unique because when you get to the gulf of maine the coast is really rocky the water is really clearish and well, the, the seabed is rocky, you know. Um, when you get so, uh, farther south, like Carolina and Florida, it's it's sandy. Um, and then on the west coast, it's all rocky and everything. But, yeah, like here it's sandy and it has a huge uh, sediment input from the rivers. So, like, you know, the estuaries like the Chesapeake and Pamlico Sound and all the rivers that pour into them, like the James and the Roanoke. And then you got Hudson River and you got Delaware River. And what happens is, like... Um, you know, south of New York, the water is kind of murky for the most part. You know, it's not a, it's not a snorkeler's paradise. Uh, <laughs> but then, you know, when you get w east of New York, um, you do have like shark dive operations. You have like Rhode Island is a big place to look for blue sharks and mako sharks, and then. Um, I mean, even even in Virginia, you got Chesapeake Light Tower. That is a cool place. In Delaware, you do have really cool reefs, but they're, I mean, like like oyster reefs, but like they're kind of more offshore. Um, and I mentioned this, this is important to kind of mention because it's just, this ecoregion, it's the center of a lot of big marine life institutions, right? Uh, Woods Hole, for example, like Woods Hole, arguably, I mean, probably the most famous institution in the United States for marine uh, science, but arguably one of the world's most famous, if not the most, I don't know if I'm being arrogant when I say that, so, but... Woods Hole is really up there, right? But then you got the Virginia Institute of Marine Science, you've got Rutgers University, you got SUNY Stone, uh, Stony Brook, you got Delaware uh, University, you've got the University of Maryland system, which has a lot of great uh, marine life programs for the Chesapeake Bay, you've got UNC, Chapel Hill has a marine lab, uh, Duke has a marine lab um, in this area. So it's a big hotbed of research. And yeah, the nation's capital, like <laughs> National Geographic, and you know, the heart of a lot of conservation places and just um i think ozerch might be headquartered <laughs> in this region actually I, I had to double check that i know i just talked about them hmm. but anyway you have a lot of academic activity going on here and yet it is not a very popular place it is not well known for sharks right you know, there is no happy, fun poster of sharks of the mid-Atlantic. Like, 
Uh, I mean, not a popular one. You know, Sharks of South Carolina, that's got more notoriety, right? Sharks of Florida, Sharks of Bimini. I mean, gosh, everybody by now is familiar with Bimini, right? Everybody by now is familiar with the Bahamas and the Floridian, right? You know, it's this heart of Shark Week, center of Shark Week, right? Um, but this area, not so much. And I think it's it's probably... I mean, I'm trying to figure out why that is, but you don't have, like, you don't have famous go-to locations here, and I, not for diving really at all, um, and not for, definitely not for, like, shark stuff, except for, you know, Martha's Vineyard is where they film Jaws. That's really it. That's all I can think of. Um, and I think the reason that it is, it's because of the region's unique geography, where since you do have a lot of rivers dumping a lot of sediment out, you're making the water cloudy, it's, it's not a great place to to dive or to film, right? Um, and Rhode Island is the, is the exception. Again, there's a big shark, there is a big shark scene in Rhode Island, um, Rhode Island scuba diving and stuff. But, you know, that, that is kind of offshore and it hasn't accumulated the notoriety of, um, you know, like tropical places, you know, or South Africa, you know, or Australia, you know, like uh, West, uh, Western Australia and stuff like that. It's just like, for some, for whatever reason, and I, I think it's the geography, it's, it really is not that famous. You know, academically hyper famous, but like, you know, publicly, you know, this is not your go to uh, for sharks. You know, this is not the first thing that people sharks are not the first thing that people think of in this area, um, which is really strange because we have a really high. I think it's high biodiversity here, uh, 54 to 55 shark species. Plus, this is one thing that's starting to get more popular. We have deep water canyons, like submarine canyons, really, really deep offshore. Um, Norfolk Canyon is, is a really important one that I, I love to uh, talk about a lot, um, but we have Washington Canyon, Baltimore Canyon, uh, like moving up the coast, like offshore south of Cape Cod, all the way down to Cape Hatteras. I think Norfolk might be the southernmost, but um, yeah, these really cool, like really massive gashes in the seafloor where there's a high biodiversity, a lot of different shark species, deep water shark species. And uh, recently, uh, specifically I, NOAA, uh, National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, um, they began this really cool program called Okeanos, I want to say, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, bringing really cool footage from these trenches, from these, well not trenches, but like, sorry, canyons, submarine canyons. Um, and that, that exploration, it's slowly building in popularity, in public popularity, and it's just, it's super cool. Um, and that's, that's a new research focus that I'm really digging, because they're making all those videos, like, really accessible, and it's just, it's cool to see, and you do see so, uh, sharks sometimes, which is, it's, it, it, but it, it's like this deep water, ah, oh, man, it, it's, <laughs> like, it's, it's local deep water wildlife, right? Um. I just, I think it's amazing. So that's something that's starting to creep up and starting to make this region a little bit more distinct. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I think enough setup for the region. We should talk about what kind of sharks live here and why they live here, why some are surprising, and why did I say 54 to 55? We'll have answers to these and more questions soon. Stay tuned.